everybody, and welcome to Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. Today we're gonna to show you how to tie the stimulator. It's a go-to dry fly. If you've never fished it, it is a must. The first material is our thread here, the Uni 6 Ot in yellow. The hook we're gonna be tying it on today is our TMC 5212 dry fly hook. We're gonna do a size eight. And then our tail, as well as the wing for this fly, is gonna be bleached elk hair. From there, we're gonna use a little bit of uh, ribbing on it, just some fine or extra small gold wire. The body, the abdomen, and the, the uh, thorax are gonna utilize a couple of super fine dry fly dubbings. We're gonna use uh, amber for our abdomen, and then we're gonna put the yellow um, up on the front. From there, uh, the underwing, we're gonna use a little bit of crystal flash, some fluorescent yellow. On top of the wing for an indicator, we're gonna put some sparkle emerger on the clear white. And then we're gonna use a couple different hackles uh, over the abdomen. We're gonna use this Keo brown saddle or uh, cape, this brown cape from Keo, as well as the grizzly cape on the thorax of the fly. And then we're gonna throw in some extra legs and put some of these fluorescent yellow uh, chartreuse rubber barred legs from Hairline. All right, so we got our hook and our vise. We went ahead and bent down our barb. Don't need that barb. And we're gonna start our thread on this hook shank. It's a nice 2X long hook shank, which is great for these stimulators. So I'm gonna start my thread and then we're gonna put our tail in first thing. So I got some bleached elk hair that I have stacked in my Dr. Slick hair stacker here. And we're just gonna pull those out. We got them all nicely aligned there. I tend to stack my elk hair a couple times. I'll stack it once and then I'll pull it out and go through it and then stack it again just to make sure that they're nice, nice and even like that. So now I'm gonna measure right about the length of the hook point for my tail, kind of a shortened tail on this guy. And we're gonna tie this down, the shank of the hook. I'm not putting too much pressure on it because I don't want it to flare on me. Let's trim out our excess here. I'll show you what I mean by that. So with elk hair, if, if you bite into it, it's gonna flare out if you've ever done an elk hair caddis or anything like that, you're, you're kind of going for that. But on my tail for the stimulator, I wanna keep it out back, kind of straight out without flaring. So I'm just gonna real slight, light thread wraps here towards the back, and then we'll snug it down as I come back forward there. So just like so, nice and easy. And then we'll add the ribbing of our fly here. I'm gonna trip out a couple of crazy fibers we got. And so this is that extra small or uh, fine gold wire. You don't wanna go too heavy on this wire because you wanna make sure that it's nice, nice and buoyant when you're all done with it. So it's turning on me a little bit there because I got those loose wraps, so I'm just gonna cinch it down and work this back. There we are. So from there, I'm gonna start my body, my dubbing for the abdomen, which is going to be amber. I'm gonna do a two-tone stimulator, so just a yellowish orange in the back and then a full yellow on the front. So the amber is a nice color here for this fly. And we'll do our nice tight dubby noodle. Whenever you're doing dry flies, you wanna make sure you get your dubby noodles nice and tight to avoid having room for water permeation. It helps to keep your fly nice and buoyant all day long. So we're just gonna make our, our taper for our stimulator, keeping it nice and slim. But it is a big bug, so you got room to work with. And we'll work our way forward. I'm gonna utilize that same distance that we measured for the, the hook point there. And I'll leave just about that, maybe just a little bit more when I go up to the front for the thorax. This fly is a must have. If you don't have any stimulators around, you better get, uh, get tie-in or get some into your box somehow, because it is a must have attractor pattern. 
It's a great fly to fish if there's a good stone fly hatch going on. If you got a big salmon fly hatch, you gotta tie them a bit larger, but it'll imitate those as well. Or just as an attractor, if they're feeding off a, anything on the surface aggressively, hoppers or terrestrials and different things like that, they will most likely take this fly as well. So a wide range of sizes, also you can do size four on their larger end, all the way down to maybe a 12. And then we're gonna come in and add our hackle here. So a little bit longer than the hook point there. I'm leaving myself a little bit of extra room because we got quite a few materials we're gonna be adding there. But now we're gonna put in our hackle. So I measured out a piece of hackle here. So this is a, an eight gauge tackle and I clipped off some of the barbels just to give some friction to tie in against there. So let's show you how we utilize that thing. Maybe I can get Chris, the dude behind the camera to come over and hold this for me. So all you do with your hackle when you're measuring it out is you just Put it over that shaft there, measure it out, and you can see where the barbels are measuring to. That's the hook size. So we got a pretty well size eight for here. Thank you, Chris. So we tied that in right on the side here, and you can see I got it locked in nicely with that the barbel sticking out. So now I'm gonna half hitch this off, keep my thread from moving around on me. And then we can wrap that hackle back. So pulling it straight up here. And just wrap it back. We're gonna go one time right on top of itself and then we'll open Palmer spacing wraps towards the back here. I'm just gonna do it with my fingers but it looks like I'm gonna need some hackle pliers. I really like the stone faux ones when I'm working with hackle. They grab really well and, and they don't tend to to bite too hard and, and break me off ever so I really enjoy these hackle pliers. Try and keep it even here as I palm her back. Give that nice buggy body that we're after here on this stimulator. And then we're gonna capture it. The other nice thing about these stone fuzz is you can kind of let it hang and it's gonna hold it there. So I'm gonna capture it, I'm gonna counter wrap right over top of it here, starting on the back. And as you go around, you kind of wanna wiggle your, your wire through the hackle to avoid trapping as many fibers as you can, you're gonna trap some inevitably. But I'm gonna use my rotary, so in order to do that, I'm gonna clip out the excess hackle here. And then wrap it on forward. So you can see I'm just going back and forth, trying to work around those barbels. As I go forward, this wire is really just meant to secure all of that hackle in place, add a little bit of shine as well to the underbody that the fish will see. So we're gonna capture that off. I'm not too worried about trapping some of those hackle fibers. I can pull them back here and wrap that down like so. So we got a nice buggy looking body. I'm gonna come in and pick some of this out here. Got some stems sticking out there. So let's pick out some more of those hackle fibers that I trapped. Being careful not to pull on the wire too much or on the stem of your hackle because you can pull things out and you'd have to run back and kind of start over with some of this. So just get them to stick out here, just like that. that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna come back in and we're gonna do a little bit of extra flash on this fly. So the material I'm using for that is the crystal flash, the fluorescent yellow. And I just clipped it even. I'm gonna measure just short of my tail here. And tie that in. Keeping it on top here. And then I'm gonna pull it back and over and just double it up slightly. like so and then we can clip it off even here 
and come in and do our elk hair wing. So that gives a nice flash to the underwing there. We're gonna pull out some elk hair. So I got my bleached elk hair. I didn't show you when I did the tail, so we'll show you how we're gonna do the wing. I'm just gonna pull it off. I'm gonna do maybe a little bit more than a pencil of thickness here in diameter. Because a lot of that is gonna be under duff and an extra material. So you can see how duffy and you know, all that dubbing fibers that's in there. So we're gonna pull all that out. You can use your dubbing brush to help you along there. If you got just a standard comb hanging around at home, that's a nice tool to use as well. Or just your fingers pulling through there will work also. So I kind of roll it through my fingers to kind of free up the ones that I want to get out of there. And then if you hold it closer to the tips, I'll get some of those shorter ones out as well. And you can see I'm left with a little bit less than I started, but that's okay. We still got enough there. So I'm going to trim it just so that it'll fit in my hair stacker on the back end. And we'll drop it in. And we're going to stack it out. Getting those tips aligned in there. And we'll show you how that comes out. So see how that first run actually looks pretty good. I don't have any too much that's kind of turned around on me, but there are a couple of fibers in there that I don't want. So we're going to pull those out using your fingers. You can use hackle pliers too if you need to clean it up a little bit, stack it one more time. It may not be necessary for you. I just tend to do a little bit extra effort and I think it, you know, it helps the final, final fly. So it's worth it for me. Okay, so holding our stacker sideways, we're gonna pull it out. You can see how nice those are aligned there. So we'll grab them with our left hand and kind of measure out our length, transferring them back and forth here. So this one, I wanna go just to the length of the tail there. So it's gonna go a little bit past where the flash is. And we can measure where that's gonna be here and trim it up to tie it down. So again, Counter to how you do an elk or caddis, we're going to trim this one right to length because we're going to cover it all up on the head versus having it flare out as we would otherwise. Okay, one more trim. I didn't quite cut that short enough. There we go. So I'm going to come over the top. I'm just going to give one wrap, kind of hold it in place, make sure it's where I want it before I kind of cinch it and work forward on these fibers and tie them down. And then as I work back, yeah, let's get those, there we go. So work back, kind of build a ramp up on this elk hair, but not with too much tension again, because you want it to kind of lay flat here. If I were to pull this tight, it would flare all these fibers out, and that's not the effect that I'm going for. So just light wraps over the top of it back to where our amber dubbing ended there to keep everything down. All right, so now I'm gonna cover all that up, make it nice and clean here. Give myself a nice working base for when I come back in to do the dubbing and the hackle. But before that, actually, I'm gonna add one more material. It's kind of a, a tricked out stimulator a little bit. A lot of people do them in, in different ways. You can simplify, you don't necessarily need all this flash, um, but it's a, a good attractant. And then this part here, this sparkler merger yarn, is really for you, the fisher, for visibility of this fly. The bleached air hair is not too bad to see as it is, but adding the white to the top of this just makes it so that you got great visibility of it. And just like we did with the crystal flash, I'm going to tie it in and then double it over there and wrap it back and then smooth out this taper that we got going. Whenever I'm working with longer hooks like this, I tend to support my hook as I'm tying, especially if I'm tying with a lot of pressure because I'll bend my hooks if I don't. So just holding the material out of the way and kind of keeping it locked in how you want it there. We'll come in, we'll trim that just the same length as the other piece was 
So we got a nice wing built up there. From here, let's fix this taper. I'm gonna add the grizzly hackle, which is typically the legs of the front of this fly. I did the same thing that we did with the brown. Prep my little hackle fiber there. Got it with the barbels clipped short so they'll help grab the thread here. And we tie that in right next to the wing and secure it down quickly there. So pretty simple for that piece. The next step is to do just a little bit of this dubbing. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna add legs. Another piece of the trick out. Sometimes I forget all these extra materials I'm adding to this fly. Trishital stimulator would just have the hackle as the legs of the bug, but we have these awesome barred rubber legs. So why not use those, right? So I'm gonna measure them. We'll do maybe just right about the hook body. I might trim them shorter than that. I'm gonna tie one in here on the far side. A couple wraps on. One in front, one behind. Trim that to length as well. And do the same on this side closest to me here. So a couple down the middle. Wrap it front. Right behind, that's just gonna keep it from sliding around up here on the front. And then we can climb out our excess. You don't have to worry too much about how they're splaying right now because I'm gonna control that when I add my dubbing in and get them to kind of the way that I want them to. But now we can come back in and start dubbing the thorax here. So the yellow super fine dubbing. And add this in. So a little more dubbing towards the front and then we will be able to wrap that grizzly hackle that we got tied in around all this stuff. Just like so. I like to leave myself just a little bit of thread room here up on the front so that I'm not crowding the eye. I'm gonna come in, might as well just trim out these legs a little bit. Kind of pull them up, make sure they're going to all be even. Don't stretch them, just pull them up lightly. So I just, underneath there, kind of grab them, pull them out to show you. And clip them all even there. There we go. So now the hack hole, so I'm going to half hitch this thread off. So, boarding the legs and wrap it around. Just like so, pull the material out of the way here, give it a couple of locking wraps, and you can trim out that excess, and then we'll give her a whip finish. Good way to practice holding your material while you whip finish on this fly. Something to, to kind of practice, because there's a few bugs out there that you gotta hold everything back when you whip finish it all down, so. Clip out our thread, like so. I'm gonna give it a little bit of zap a gap for durability here. I'm not even too worried about the bodkin on this larger fly. I can just come in and touch it slightly with that. And a nice little trick that I've seen, I can't remember where I had seen this, but since I think I got some glue, and my hook eye there, you can use 
echo fiber. You could use a pheasant tail. Just stick it down in there, pull it through, and you're cleaning that glue out of the way and it's gonna leave your hook eye free for your tippet. But that is all there is to the stimulator. We'll call this the tricked out stimulator. There you are. One of the most popular dry fly patterns in my box for sure. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. If you have a fly you'd like to see us tie in the future, leave us a comment below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there. My heart over my mind. I'm not over